Uh, my name is Bartosz Golaszewski, and this is going to be about uh, a concept that I would like to introduce or uh, rather reintroduce to the Linux kernel, that is the uh, early platform devices and drivers. Uh, and yes, I work uh, for Baylibre. We are a uh, French consultancy uh, working in the embedded Linux field. So we're based in, uh, in Nice. We are around uh, 30 engineers uh, at the office and a couple guys uh, remotely worldwide. Uh, we do all kinds of uh, products. So we uh, projects we work on upstream Linux kernel development and maintenance. We do uh, we help our clients ship uh, consumer electronics products from hardware design to software development. Uh, we are driving the kernel CI project. And personally, I've been in this field for the for the nine last years uh, so far. I contribute to the Linux kernel and to various user space projects. Uh, and I created and maintain uh, libgpiod, which is the user space part of, uh, of the GPIO framework in the kernel. And uh, for the last two years, I've been on and off uh, working on supporting an older family of chips for Texas Instruments, that is the uh, DaVinci family of SOCs. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so the thing with DaVinci is that uh, the upstream support for DaVinci dates back to the time when we didn't have uh, a lot of nice frameworks uh, when from to the times from before uh, in, in, in adoption of device tree and also uh, we, we now still have uh, support uh, with board files and, and some, some boards and some, some SOCs are supported in device tree so uh, this is all a bit complicated and uh, but we're moving slowly towards uh, like uh, towards making the support for DaVinci more modern more in line with uh, contemporary standards in the Linux kernel. Uh, and uh, quite recently, DaVinci got a new shiny common clock framework driver. And during the work on this, uh, on this driver, it turned out that we could use something uh, like the early platform devices that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, and uh, the thing is that before that, we, we didn't notice uh, that it would be useful because it was all hard-coded in Arch, uh, in Arch uh, Mac DaVinci directory, and now it's, uh, it's an actual driver, and it turned out that uh, we, we, we may need to change some things in the core driver model. Uh, so I, I would like it to be an actual discussion, so feel free to raise your hands. We have mics uh, around, and, and let's, let's, uh, let's have questions. So if you work uh, on, on embedded systems, you are guaranteed to kind of have come across uh, a concept called platform drivers. So platform drivers are basically uh, drivers for devices that are non-discoverable, uh, non-hot pluggable. So you have to define them somewhere. And the concept be behind the platform drivers is that you uh, separate the driver code from the device definition. Uh, and then you abstract it so that the definition and the resources for devices come uh, from, from many different, can come from many different sources. Uh, so nowadays it's uh, mostly device tree for architectures such as ARM, ARM64, ACPI. I, I don't know much about ACPI, I just know that, uh, that it is there. Uh, and for older architectures like DaVinci, it's the board files and uh, either you use the legacy platform data or, uh, or generic device properties which are better because they, they can be used uh, the same way that uh, device tree properties are. And then resources such as uh, register ranges, uh, interrupts, uh, some higher level resources such as uh, GPIOs or, or FIs uh, in, 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 term, in, in case of network devices uh, are defined in, let's say, device tree or board files. And then they are abstracted and fed through various frameworks to platform drivers. Uh, and uh, yeah, so. Uh, Platform drivers are, are not discoverable any, on any bus, so they have a uh, virtual bus, just called a platform bus. Uh, and for the purpose of our talk, the most important thing is that is when these drivers get uh, instantiated, the, the devices get instantiated. Uh, when, when do they get created at the earliest? So in case of device tree, uh, we have an arch init call, which is uh, defined in, in drivers slash base somewhere. It's called off OF platform default populate init. Uh, so as an arch init call, it comes after the core init call and uh, post core init call. Everyone knows what, what init calls are. Uh, so, so these are these callbacks that are called in, in, uh, during the system boot uh, in certain order. Uh, and yes, yeah, so, so the, the, in case of device, we, we have this arch init call. 
so this comes after um, all the frameworks, the, the different frameworks for device drivers are initiated. Uh, the same, pretty much the same goes for board files. So th th this, example comes, uh, this example comes from ARM, but I, I, I think it's the same for most other architectures. So we have uh, another arch init call that is called from uh, the init machine callback. This is, this is the init machine callback is the one that is in the machine description struct the, the, in, in legacy board files. Board files. And uh, in ACPI, I don't know. I, I, uh, I assume it must be the same or, or similar, but uh, if, 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 you, if you know ACPI, let me know because uh, I know how it's, uh, how it's uh, done in this case. Uh, but there is a problem. So sometimes you need uh, devices to be initiated earlier than that, earlier than, uh, than Arch int call. Uh, and what, what do we do then, so in, in this case? So, for now, like the, the common consensus is that we, that we should use this mechanism of, of declare macros. Uh, so the mechanism behind this macro works like this. You declare a table uh, in, in, your, uh, in, in memory, uh, you name it somehow, uh, and you put uh, devices into it, uh, device, sorry, the structures into it, and each structure contains uh, the, a pointer to a compatible string in your device tree. Well, the, yeah, so this is OF, so this is specific for device tree, but uh, uh, let, let's, let's go through it. Uh, you define the device compatible string in this structure. You uh, assign it a function callback, like a, a function address. Uh, this is going to be your callback that is going to be called. Uh, and then uh, the architecture will go through uh, the device nodes earlier and uh, scan for the, for the compatible strings that you defined and call these callbacks. So the problem with that is uh, this, this has nothing to do with actual device drivers. So these are just bare functions that get a device node uh, structure uh, and, and do something about it. So you don't get to use uh, all, the, uh, all the fancy APIs that you have for device drivers. Uh, no device resource management. This is not really a big concern usually because these are not devices that will be removed. Uh, but you don't get this uh, nice abstraction layer for uh, resources, for, uh, for register ranges. Uh, you, uh, you can't use the <coughs> device-specific uh, logging. Uh, and yeah, so the, the three main families of, of, of devices, classes of, of devices that uh, usually make use of these macros are clock source, most clock source drivers. Uh, in clock events, uh, certain clocks, so certain clocks, uh, like when you have a clock controller, or certain, clocks control, certain clocks need to be uh, enabled uh, earlier in the, in the boot process. Uh, I'm going to show it on, on an example of, uh, of TI Da Vinci. Uh, and certain interrupt chips, interrupt controllers, so uh, like the generic interrupt controller from ARM needs to be uh, initiated much earlier than, uh, than, for instance, GPIO expanders, which uh, uh, which, in a, like, which export interrupts, which can you know, uh, be regular platform devices. Uh, and so during, uh, during the work on the, on the Da Vinci clock driver, we uh, came to a point where uh, the clock has been implemented as a platform driver. The clock controller driver was, has been implemented as a platform driver. Uh, and it turned out that uh, one of the SOCs uh, doesn't boot uh, with, this, uh, clock controller, with this clock driver. And it uh, just turned out that uh, one, on, like on this specific SOC, uh, we need one of the clocks uh, for the clock source. Uh, so this, uh, can, can you see this comment? Yeah, so this forced us to, uh, to introduce a, a uh, not so nice workaround, which basically allows the driver to not care about the struct device. So we need to check, you know, at uh, it, if devs, if, uh, that, that check if the device is null and act accordingly. Uh, if, if it's not null, then do something else. Uh, and it also forced, uh, like, this is a single user, but it actually made uh, the entire code uh, change its way. So we, we, we no longer can use the, the devm functions and, uh, and all that. And uh, I started looking at it, so uh, because I, I, I didn't really like this comet, uh, and I started looking uh, at, at what, what is already there and can be used to, uh, to, 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 to come back to a more uh, unified code in the driver. Uh, and I, it turned out that someone already had tried to uh, implement something like early platform devices. 
and drivers. Uh, so this uh, this was back in 2009. So so uh, not not so long after after the after the support for uh, DaVinci was introduced in the kernel. Uh, so this was based on early Param. So basically, it was invoked by architecture uh, calling the parse early Params functions function. Uh, and this was uh, question. No? <laughs> So uh, this was not um, very convenient to use because you, you needed to deal with, uh, with uh, classes of devices. You needed to use certain strings that would describe a class of devices, and then this, this class string would be passed to this uh, early param, the parse early params function, and was a, a, bit, a bit complicated. And uh, also the thing is that uh, the problem with this one, with this solution, was uh, that it made it seem as if it was a part of the, of the driver model, but uh, in reality, this, uh, these early drivers only used the same structures, so struct device, struct platform driver, uh, and so forth, but they, these devices never really became a part of the driver model, so uh, they were like separate entities just reusing the same structures. Uh, and yeah, so this is very specific to, uh, to the SH architecture and Blackfin, but this is now removed. Um, the, the only user outside of uh, Arch SH is, uh, is SH Mobile uh, in ARM. So, <laughs> uh, and I actually have a patch series pending on, on the, on the LK, LKML that actually moves all this code into Arch SH, but uh, I, I just don't get any response from, uh, from SH maintainers. Uh, ex except that there, there, there wasn't any, any resistance to, to this part of, of, uh, of my work. So um, I don't know if you, uh, I, I, I know how to, how to get it merged. Uh, yeah, so I started thinking about, uh, actually, so initially I tried to reuse this one. I, I submitted a series that adds, that cleans uh, this uh, framework a bit, uh, adds support for device tree. Um, but this was rejected mostly on the grounds that uh, I needed to make um, changes, like I, I needed to somehow mark the early devices in the device tree, and since this has nothing to do with the hardware description, it was uh, rejected, uh, and rightfully so. So I started uh, thinking about a new solution, and the idea was, uh, and the idea was to have something that, uh, that would be much simpler, that would be a part of the driver model. Uh, so I would like to have early devices that would actually become regular platform devices once, uh, all the, all the, once the entire driver model is initiated. And I also wanted to make it much simpler, so um, without the, the, the burden of, of having to declare some early param classes and all that. And uh, for this particular case, when we have both board files and uh, device tree, I wanted to uh, support both. Uh, so I came up with a solution where uh, we had two new uh, data structures. Uh, they're called early platform device and early platform driver, uh, which is, by the way, the same that, uh, that the, the previous implementation used, except that in my series, we first, we, we first moved this old code into RHSH, and, and this is the... Uh, the new implementation. So users will never have to deal with early platform devices uh, directly. They will just uh, define them, but uh, actually we don't use, uh, we don't add any new fields or, or uh, we, any new fields to the structure that the user would be concerned about. Uh, and for the early platform driver, we only add a single callback uh, that's called early probe. Um, and this is because basically uh, we have we have to choose between the two. We either have a single probe function, but users will need to know whether they are being probed early or not, or, or, or normally. Uh, and I, I think that a cleaner solution is to have a separate early probe callback and then uh, do the regular probe afterwards. So the, the, this is the, the only change. We just uh, have the early platform driver with, an, with one additional callback. Uh, and the general idea is that we have uh, the architecture code calls the early platform start function, and then we register a post core init call. So uh, once the, the, the frameworks are initiated, we call a function called early platform finalize. And this, what, what it does is that it seamlessly converts 
all platform driver or ILI platform drivers to regular platform drivers, all uh, ILI platform devices to regular platform devices. Uh, and once this is done, uh, all subsequent calls to any functions related to early platform will actually become uh, regular platform functions. So if you have like early platform device uh, register, it will, after, after this, this uh, post call init call is, uh, is executed, it becomes regular platform uh, device register. Uh, and what, what, what it does, so um, the advantage of this is that we now have we now have uh, access to all these APIs that we use with, uh, with regular devices. Of course, still, if you probe uh, a device very early, you need, to, you need to pay attention to what you're doing because some or many frameworks, many, many, many uh, things may not be initiated and available yet. But in general, this allows uh, for code unification, which I'm gonna show you. So yeah, let's go through an example. Uh, so this should be my branch, yeah. So this is uh, the branch that, uh, that was last, yeah, with the series that was last submitted to the list. So with, uh, with the implementation itself, I also included a, an example driver. Uh, it's, I think, it, what is it called? Dummy early. Yeah. So this is just a, a dummy driver that uh, shows how to use this, this new API. Uh, it, it, it just has a, 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 an example data structure. So this is how you do it. You, you define your, your, your off-device uh, ID, just as, as you would with, with a normal platform driver. And then you register a, an early platform driver. And just as I, uh, as I told before, there is an early probe, and then regular assignment to the, to the platform driver structure. And uh, yeah, so we have two probe functions, the early probe function and the, and the normal uh, probe function. So we get to use all these APIs that we would normally normally use. So uh, we can use the device specific logging, we can set driver data, we can get platform resource, so we get to actually, uh, the, the resources from device tree and, and board files are, are actually getting, they, 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 get, they, they get converted to, to the standard form. Uh, you don't have to parse it uh, either manually or, or using the uh, the OF underscore uh, family of functions that deal with, um, with device nodes. Uh, yeah, uh, and then you have the normal probe, which actually can get access to the same, to the very same structure that has been, uh, that has been assigned as driver data uh, in here. Uh, the driver just shows how we can retrieve uh, driver data in, in that we assigned an early probe in, in normal probe. Uh, and as far as uh, device registration goes, it's quite simple. So, uh, uh, where was it? So this is the how it looks in device tree. Uh, well, this device is, is, is very simple. So we just have the reg property, but uh, this this is how how we would do it. So very very simple. And then in board files. Uh, Yeah, this is just a dummy resource and then the registration of the, of, the, of the early device. So as you can see, we register an early platform device, but in reality, we just, we just use the platform driver. We don't use any, any of the private fields of the structure. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, so. I got some feedback, uh, like this, this was the series, the, the series that I last uh, submitted, and I got some Excuse feedback. So Rob Herring said I skimmed through. Excuse oh, me, just a question. Just a question. Yeah. So why, why do you need to wrap the platform driver into a new early platform driver? Why don't you just put the early probe inside the platform driver? So why, what's uh, the purpose of wrapping the platform driver into a new? Oh uh, yeah, so yeah, maybe, maybe I should have. Uh, describe the, the architecture. So the idea behind this early platform drivers is that we contain uh, a, a very small framework for early platform drivers, uh, separate like that is separate from the from the whole platform driver model and, and the, the the very core platform the very core driver model of the Linux kernel, uh, because they are not some some things may not be initiated yet. So we just initialize. So so we, we want uh, want to have something separate that is initialized from the start. 
So it's very simple. You, you, you simply have uh, two lists. One holds the early drivers, structures, and, and the second holds the early, uh, early platform devices. And once the, either the dri a driver gets registered or a platform uh, device gets registered, they are matched. And if you find a driver that matches this device, you do the early probe, uh, and, uh, yeah, and, 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 and you, can, you can run your code and that, that you need an early probe. Otherwise, if you don't match it, they, they stay in the list, and then you're going to match it at a later time once a new driver has been added. Uh, and then what, what, it, what it also grants you is that it supports probe defer. So uh, unlike uh, of declare, when, when you have to uh, actually pay attention to the order in which these devices get initial, initialized, uh, in this case, you can simply return, from, even from early probe, you can return uh, eProbe defer, and uh, a device that, that has been marked as deferred is going to be probed at a later time uh, once other resources are available. Uh, so this, this works like, this is a minimalistic version of the, of the real platform device model. Uh, this, this is how it works, and, and, uh, and this is why, why, why we wrap it uh, in, a, in, a, in, a set, in a set of separate structures. So we don't want to reuse any fields from, uh, from real struct device or struct platform device. We just want to have something separate that after our post init call, uh, callback is called, uh, no longer matters. Uh, so just to give you an idea, for instance, the, the previous early platform driver implementation actually reused, uh, to link the devices, it reused the dev rest link. So the, 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 the um, struct uh, list node that was used to, that, that is normally used to link the dev rest uh, structures has been reused to link the devices. And then uh, at, at, at some point it was uh, clear to this, the DevRest link has, uh, was cleared, but this was very confusing because if you try to use the, any, any DevRest function in, uh, from, from your early probe in the previous implementation, you would break everything. Uh, so this is why I, I wrap it in a separate structure. I, don't, I just don't want to reuse anything <coughs> from, uh, from, 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 the, from the actual structure. This is something, so, so uh, w during the review, uh, Rob Herring pointed out the same thing, like, why, why don't you reuse this, why don't you reuse this? And I, I told him the same thing, like, I, I don't want to reuse it on purpose, because it's confusing if you, if you try to... Okay. Yeah, I have another question. So if you, you said that it supports deferred probing? Yeah. So suppose you're descri you describe your clock event device correctly in DT, so it has a, a module clock, and it's part of a power domain, and it's deferred. When will it be retried? Because you need the clock event well, drive quite early. So yeah, in this, ca in this case it, it will not like work, that. but uh, let's just say that, uh, yeah, so I, I try to make it not, not only for, the, for, the, for my use case, where I don't need it, but for, for general use case. And uh, this is, um, I don't have a use case in mind where in early device probes, uh, in, in, during an early device probing, you would need a probe defer, but uh, it, it works in that uh, it's, it, this driver is marked as deferred, and then once another device is probed, uh, another early device is probed, or another early device drive, I, I think this is not needed, but I, I also, also do it if another device, early device uh, driver is, uh, is registered, it's going to be retried, like reprobed. And uh, so this, this works pretty much the same as normal probe deferral, it's just that it works on the, on the, uh, on the early platform structures. Yeah, so you have still have to make sure that the, the clock driver is initialized first, because probably the clock, the timer needs a clock. And oh, yeah, yeah. The interrupt all. controller may, but may need a clock, and if the clock driver needs an interrupt too, then you're screwed. You can only get uh, as far, you know, with <laughs> so in this case, yeah, without, without, uh, without the clock source uh, driver, you're not going to get far, yeah. So uh, let me ask the most stupid question ever. Um, why is the normal driver model available so late? And uh, what prevents from bringing it, it earlier? Because after all, it's just data structures that you allocate in memory with pointers. And you can already do that at the early stage. So there must be a fundamental reason why it's available so late and, and why adding another like layer is needed to have it earlier rather than having the real thing earlier? It's a uh, very good question. Uh, I also asked myself the same question. I just kind of assumed that uh, so someone, has, someone did it on purpose. I, I didn't investigate it, but uh, maybe, maybe we should, yeah. I, uh, I was kind of afraid of asking this question on the mailing list. <laughs> yeah, without a timer, your system may boot up fine if you don't use msleep. I'm sorry, what? msleep. msleep, yeah. So, uh, Be 
Because M delay yeah, yeah. uses the delay loop, so that yeah. works fine. But M sleep relies on working interrupts and a timer. Yeah. And actually, I've seen cases where where everything worked, although the 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 timer was initialized too yeah, late. Yeah. So, but as soon as you have some driver that actually uses M sleep, you have a problem. How, how is M sleep related to just probing things and and? Um, Yeah, but it's, I don't know. Well, not, not only M sleep, if you do anything that actually relies on the... I mean, M, uh, it could be if you, I don't know, if you need M sleep, it could be like a resource that you need to have a, um, a sleep-based thing, and so you could do a prop defer and wait for that, that thing to be available, then, because probably if you need M sleep, you're not one of the early driver, and you could like consider that as a resource and defer that probe and get reprobed once that sleeping with a real sleep becomes available. Right. So, it, it, in, in in theory, I, in theory, the driver model is just data structures linked to each other. So there should be nothing that prevents that. As soon as you have like KMLock available, pretty much you can mm -hmm. you can do it, right? Yeah. So uh, usually, like I, I haven't seen a case where you would need to initiate a device uh, without uh, slab available. So even even the CLK declare or <coughs> the, the whole of declare is, is called after KMLock is available. Yeah. So. Uh, so there's a, I, th I think there's a question. Yeah, there. back back to the deferred probe from early platform drivers. I, as soon as you've allowed a defer, aren't you acknowledging that there's no need for that to be an early driver? Because it's not going to get instantiated until really yeah, so, late so, once you've done that. So I started thinking that maybe, uh, yeah, as I, as I said, I, I personally didn't have a use case for that. It's just that I, I started thinking that maybe you have a, an early platform driver that depends on another early platform drivers uh, or driver. Uh, I, I haven't seen such use case. Maybe there is. Like, yeah, but, maybe but you're not going to process that the deferred until you get to late in NIT calls. I'm sorry, what? You're not going <laughs> to deal with your deferred probes until you get to late in NIT calls, so that second early driver is never going to get Yeah, but uh, no, no, this, this is not the same deferred probe. As ah, the, okay. The, this is a, a, like, this is a separate mechanism. mechanism in the early platform uh, implementation. Maybe, maybe I'm going to okay, show you. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, just, just, uh, you answered that's good. Like, I, I, maybe we do have a use case for that, because we need a, we need a PSC clock in DaVinci. For, for the clock source driver, and they are they both should be early platform devices, right? Because right now the clock source is in Mac Da Vinci. Uh, it's, it's like hard coded, it's not a real driver, but uh, once we convert it to a real driver, unless we do have this early platform in place, we would have to use timer, timer declare. Uh, so, so I think we, we do have a use case for that, uh, actually. So basically what we would do, let's say we have two, like for example of Da Vinci, we need two early platform devices. One is going to be the, the, the PSC clock, and one is going to be the clock source driver. And then let's say that one of them, uh, the, the clock source driver, gets early probed, but it, the PSC driver is not yet probed, so it defers the probe. We probe the other one, and then we can come, ba come back to the clock source driver. Is it, that, does, that, does that make sense? Yeah, uh, there's a question. Uh, right. Um, I believe you also need the, um, the, the potentially need the deferred probing to assure that an interrupt control or early um, platform device has been initialized before your timer. Because if you use the same struct, then you don't have the currently hard-coded ordering of the various OF declare options. Um, Did you follow? No, no, I, I, I got lost. Sorry, <laughs> can, can, can you repeat? Uh, like, uh, um, when you're using... Um, an early platform device for a timer. Yeah. Then you will likely have an interrupt input into that one. Yeah. And yeah. for that, you need to have the interrupt uh, yeah, controller yeah, definitely, also definitely, have yeah. its early platform driver yes. um, initialized. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that may require um, to have the deferred um, ordering at yeah. the early yeah. level implemented mm -hmm. to assure an ordering of those two types yes. of um, devices. Or did you um, still have any particular hard coded? ordering of which types of early platform devices. Yeah, so the thing with DaVinci, uh, the, with this specific platform, is that a lot of things are still hard-coded in, in Arch slash Mac DaVinci things. So it's like, you know, we have these board files, and even in case of device tree, you still have some, some quirks in the, in the board files. So uh, this is not yet uh, in the state that it, that, that <laughs> that it should be, and uh, I, I hope we're going to move towards it, but uh, yeah, this is, this is how it is right now. So yeah. You're right. Uh, so basically, the idea behind the early platform devices uh, implementation that, that I did is that it's a minimalistic version of the real platform driver model. And uh, so, 
when, when, you, when you have dependencies between early devices, you need probe deferral, or you need to track you know, dependencies in the, in, the, in the device tree, but that's, that, that is not happening anytime soon. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm speaking out of a lot of ignorance, so if I say anything stupid, just tell me it's stupid. Um, but it, it sounds like you're, you're getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and you want to replicate. I'm overstating the case, but eventually you want to replicate the entire device model just earlier. No, once, not, once, not really. Not really. When, when, once you uh, get all these people who keep getting their special cases, <laughs> and they say, oh, but that would be great, oh, but that would be great, oh, but that would be great. So it, it sounds like what you just acknowledged a few minutes ago is you just assumed that you needed this, this tool. You didn't look at what the real use case was, whether it really is required right now, or really which use cases demand this functionality. Um, the point I'm headed toward is, if you don't really constrain it and corral it into the smallest possible piece, it will naturally want to grow. That's just the way our software is. And people will find new ways to use it, and all of a sudden it becomes this big, bloated functionality. So if you don't understand what the real use case is and don't have a way to constrain it, we're just doomed to it becoming a really large monster, I think. Yes, so, so end of philosophical statement. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Just for the record, like my implementation, uh, like the core, the, 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 the core in, in drivers slash platform is 300 lines of code, something like this, even less. Uh, for now, may, maybe there, there, there needs to be some, some uh, locking in there. Uh, this is not perfect yet, but for now it's, it's around 300 lines of code. And uh, I have, I'm under the impression that if it was, it, it was widely adopted, it could save a lot more code that could be removed. So, for instance, we have uh, a family of functions that deal with devices, that deal with, for instance, device properties. Uh, like, the, the, the device properties and, and, and um, deal with, with, with struct device in general. And then we have, like, uh, for, for many of, uh, of these functions, we have um, something that re-implements them, but actually deals with struct device node and not really a device. And this is only used in those callbacks uh, we, we call from OF declare. Uh, and I, I think that if, if we moved all, all, the, all the drive, all the users of OF declare code to, to early platform drivers, we could remove all this code because it would no longer be re relevant. Uh, so yeah, that makes I, sense. I think the, the um, Frank, the, I think the use case is fairly well understood because it's you highlighted, Marius, you highlighted that it's just CLK OF declare, RQ chip OF declare, and what is it, timer or timer source declare. or whatever the name, clock event. Uh, uh, we've declared. So just, it's just three things that, that today are using early. And we need the timer, and for the timer, we need clock and interrupts. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's what we need. So it's, it's yeah, fairly yeah, I'm just well, hearing, well bounded. Uh, I'm just hearing people wanting to add layer and layer and layer when we don't really need layer and layer and layer. So if we do understand where it's needed and limit it to that, that's, that's great. So I, I like what you're saying. Uh, also, like one, one more thing, I'm, I'm now thinking about what we said earlier, that why do we have device, the device model initiated so late? So as far as, if, if I remember correctly, we use a uh, kernel thread for um, deferred probing. Uh, maybe this is the reason why it's so late and we cannot use this kernel thread uh, earlier. Yeah. Oh. oh, really? When device model's available. Do, do, do you know what the, what the reason was? Uh, no. <laughs> right, but we don't actually do that deferred probing processing until really late in the boot, so we would have the threads at that point. You're just putting the deferred probe onto a list early, so that's not a big deal, right? I think a lot of it is related to PC legacy, not like you at a interrupt controller early available, you had a, some timer available without needing to know from a clock controller what the yeah. exact clock yeah. frequency is. And actually what Thomas said, that it, it, I think you can merge early devices and normal platform devices if all threat operations and M sleep and like that would return minus E probe defer. And then another thing was that you would initialize, and if you, if you use it like that, then the system would probably start working correctly, with, but there will be lots mm -hmm. of probe deferrals because you, you don't have timers yeah. and that, that. And then the second thing to m improve that, 
if to improve the efficiency of that would be to take into account uh, uh, relations between consumers and providers, which you already have in, in DT. So right now, the e-probe defer, it would not be used if uh, the system would already know that there's a p-handle to a clock controller, so mm. and the clock controller is not there, so it, it doesn't make sense to probe the device yet. So, so right, thinking, right now it probes the device anyway, and then it returns probe defer. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that if I propose to make the driver model available earlier, as early as, as, as I do with early platform devices, uh, there would be much more resistance to it from, from the maintainers than to, to this new uh, implementation. Like ju just, just, uh, just my thoughts. So. Uh, also, are you sure that uh, memory allocation is available at the time of OFD? Yes, player? yes, because my example works and it and it, uh, okay. and it uses. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, okay. No, you actually have this function is slap available or something, and uh, I, I called it and made sure made sure that uh, that it's available. Yeah, it's available for OFD declare callbacks. So this is exactly what uh, I encountered like, like last week. Uh, I signed the patch for IMX and we were exactly in the same situation because the clocks, uh, so it was an off declare and then Rob I think told me that hey, you need to make that platform. Tried that and it didn't boot up. So I'm guessing yeah. if you're doing that, that would help us too. So there are a lot of use cases that might benefit. I, from I, I've been actually actually CC'd on two other uh, patch series which encountered the same problem. So it's it's common, up, obviously. Yeah, that was another one. Same, same yeah. exact story. So uh, this is this is what the, what the what the DaVinci driver does now. We have two entry points. We have one entry point which is, which is the CLK of declare, and another entry point to the driver code that is the probe function. So this is not very clean because you have to make sure that both cases work. Uh, Yeah. If you start the older, if you start go, uh, supporting older SOCs like the Cortex A9, where then you don't have that, and then you need early mm. clocks. So yeah, like you said, the the board files legacy uh, systems, they all basically implement those 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 very basic features. Uh, by hand, it's, it's, it, these are not drivers. These are just poking some registers, enabling some some clock sources, and and, and this works like this. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, when I when I sent the series, I I, I got nice, uh, I got some nice feedback from Rob Herring, who said I skimmed through this and it doesn't look horrible, and I think this is uh, this is very positive, right? <laughs> you, so, you said you had a, a defer that was after core, right? Uh, I'm sorry, which one slide? of the slides said something like you would uh, there it is. You have a post core init. Yeah. And you were going to do a defer. No, no. After so what, what, the, what this what this does is like we start we start the early platform uh, driver framework very early, and then once we reach the post core init calls, we convert all early platform drivers into regular platform drivers, and they become the part a part of the of the driver system of the driver model. So later everything works like before. So we make I, I, in my series I make made some changes to the core driver model where um, if a device has already been populated, it's not populated again. So the, the core driver is aware of early platform drivers and makes sure that it doesn't you know, allocate a new structure and uh, just everything stays in the same. So if we used some um, DevRes functions, they will be available after uh, this conversion. But you can't use, but you can't use them before. So, yeah, yes, yes, you can. Well. Uh, so you go into early probe, you allocate some resource. And then once you get, uh, once you do the conversion and get back to this, the same driver in, in normal and regular probe, you get this resource back, you, it still exists. Which is not the case uh, with the previous implementation where it wouldn't work because you, you wouldn't, it, it, it would never become a part of the driver model. And it also DevRest doesn't work because of the re, re, reusing the, the, the DevRest node. And yeah, so just, uh, these were, so th these are the questions that I, I would like to ask during this both. So should we or should I proceed with implementing this? Like should I, should I respin this, ser this series and then try again? Uh, and is this implementation, so you, you, can, you can look it up. It's, uh, I think if you Google this one, so this, uh, 
introduce support for real platform drivers, you should, uh, should find the series. Uh, is this series any good? Is this the right way to, uh, to do it? And, uh, or should, should we do something completely different? And so I, I think this, like, if this would become widely adopted, it's, uh, it's something that, should, that would save us a lot of code because we wouldn't have to have separate entry points for many drivers. And uh, there's a question over there. Uh, uh, if you have uh, early probe and pro then probe, uh, why? Uh, yeah, the question is why do we need uh, late probe or reg regular probe if you have early probe? What is difference? What is probed? In the, the, the functions are the same and they, ha they have the same signature. It's just that one of them is called early on and the second is called after the, the driver okay. model is available. So why don't read off the second one? Sorry, what? Why don't, uh, why don't we re uh, remove the, the oh second yeah, one? Oh yeah, because we have drivers, like the, the one, that the clock driver for uh, Da Vinci, which initiates some parts of the, of the driver, um, of, of, of some, like certain clocks, it, it needs to initiate them early, and then the rest can be initiated late, or uh, any, 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 any such use case where you have some part of the code that needs to be available, like executed very early on, and then the rest, the normal code, is executed later. Because you cannot do, you may not be able to do everything in early probe, because some other frameworks may not be initiated yet. So you just do your very basic stuff. You, you I, I don't know, you enable the clock source, and then something, some something more, like on top, on top of it, you, you do it. Is later. it well defined what we can uh, no, before, this, this what we can uh, after? Because it's uh, it's not uh, very well defined, no. Yeah. <laughs> because it depends on, on on the order of initialization. Uh, the what? Threads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you cannot m sleep in the early platform drive. Like in in the early probe, but you can in in your normal probe. There is a mic uh, coming. So if you put the early probe inside platform driver and keep them in the same list, right? And then yeah. whichever driver has a early uh, probe function, so it's not null, you call that and then later on you go with the, 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 the probe if it, if it exists. Why isn't that, again, why is this a wrong approach, keeping them together? In a single function? No, in the single structure, so that would be... Oh, because I don't want to spam the regular... I don't want to enlarge the struct platform device for everybody. Uh, I just want to... Uh, like, because, you know, platform devices are used by most systems. I, I don't want to make this structure bigger by uh, eight bytes for everybody if, if it's only a small part of users that's going to that's gonna need it. Okay, okay. And it's the same for the, for the early platform driver structure, which also, you know, has some, some private fields that, uh, that are used by my implementation, but I don't want to add it to struct device because it's already huge and uh, we, d we don't need more, more, that, more fields in it. So okay. this was the idea. Also, I don't want to, re as I said, I don't want to reuse anything from, uh, from these structures. Yeah, so, uh, so the question is, sh should I respin this uh, series? Because I, I know it no longer applies to, to the current kernel. Uh, that there were some changes to the core driver code. And, uh, so you said you wrote about that. Out of curiosity, which, which DevM functions did you use in your early probe? You oh, uh, used I, malloc or? I used the, uh, DevM K, K malloc, but uh, yep. th th this, this was just an example in, in, in my dummy driver. Right. Uh, this, th yeah, this, this is one of the things. So this is not the biggest concern because Usually, these drivers n never get removed, but still, you may want to use the DevM functions for your uh, higher level, um, higher level code, like the later code. Mm -hmm. uh, but you need to allocate some structure in, in the early probe, so you just use it to unify the code to, to have the same entry point. Let's say. Yeah, I say you need the kmalloc or and, uh, IO remap and some of those things, but I was just wondering how many. How many did you try? <laughs> what did you? Yes, yeah, so I tried. Did you I find something that broke, or you just you were just making a dummy and it's like, well, it kind of works. Well, so. you know, if you want to use DevM uh, GPIO get something, this will obviously not work. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't think this is the case for anyone. So usually it's the the resource uh, the, the the register maps. 
um, interrupts maybe yeah. and uh, yeah and memory allocation because we're dealing with very very simple code usually it's not something uh, it, it will not you know you don't need files in, in this in this case so yeah I, I used a couple uh, the simple functions yeah and maybe that's enough maybe that's all you you know maybe it's like yeah you can use these but obviously uh, anything more than that's not an early probe anyway, so. So, uh, do you have any, any more questions or do you want to say something? Uh, okay, so I think, I think we're on time. So thank you very much for coming and uh, <laughs>